to everybody out there. Looks like we have people from all over the globe literally here with us live. I'm sure we'll have many others watching the recorded session once it's there. I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio, kind of in the middle of America. Um, and thanks for taking the time. Uh, real quick on me, you see my name there on the screen. There's my Twitter and Facebook handle if you want to touch base. And I could give you a long bio, but basically I've written all the CCNA cert guide books for Cisco Press, which is the main reason why I'm here with you today. So let's talk about IPv6. But first, the quick ad. There are a couple other webinars that I'll teach in a, in a bit. And one of them coming up, the very next one, talks about avoiding the most common mistakes with CCNT and CCNA. So if you uh, have a Twitter account and you think, wow, I kept bumping into this particular common mistake, let me know. I'm still working on the presentation for that one, and I'm happy to take input on that. So join in for those as you have opportunity. Let's talk about IPv6. So what I'm going to do today for this practical guide as I've built it is we're going to take a sample network and configure dual stack IP version 4 and IP version 6 and compare the configuration and the show commands, see what's the same and what's different. And the idea is to learn IP version 6 by looking at how IP version 4 works. So say you're on the exam or you're studying and you might see a question that's got a diagram like the one you see here. You've got three routers, you've got a serial link between router 1 and 2, you've got a Metro E link between R1 and R3, and some LANs. Now if all I really care about is the IPv4 and v6 config on the routers, I really don't need to see the LAN switches. In fact, I don't even need to think about the hosts. So you might see figures like this where the LANs themselves are just a couple of straight lines like you see there. And that's the, the base figure I'll use in this sample throughout the rest of the presentation. So that's the backdrop. Again, ignoring LAN switches, ignoring the hosts. So what do we need to do to make IP version 4 and IP version 6, what we call dual stack, work on all three of those routers on all the interfaces shown. So we'll walk through addressing and routing and routing protocols and compare the two. So the first thing you need to think about for addressing is subnetting. So if I look at that diagram and I say, hmm, where do I need a subnet? Well, it turns out the answer to that question is the same for both IP version 4 and IP version 6. For instance, focus on the three yellow rectangles, the ones on the three LANs. If I've got one VLAN in each of those LANs, I need one subnet each. So three total subnets where you see the yellow, and then another subnet for each of the two WAN links for a total of five subnets. If I had, say, five VLANs over on the left where R1 sits, I'd need five subnets. Point is, comparing V4 and V6, it's the same logic, same idea about how many subnets you need. For instance, say we're doing IP version 4. Maybe you see an exam question that gives you this figure as a backdrop. We've got five different subnet numbers listed. And just as a, uh, to explain what's here for perspective, in the write-up for the session, we said, oh, we'll assume that you know some IP version 4 already. But if you don't, it's okay. We'll get through it. Um, it's relatively straightforward to the level we'll talk about here. We have a number that's to the left of the slash. That's the subnet ID. To the right is the prefix length, which is just the short way to represent the subnet mask. So those two numbers together, the subnet ID and prefix style mask, represent the subnet. Somebody planned these subnet numbers, wrote them down in a planning diagram, and maybe a question asks you something about subnetting based on that diagram. Those are the five version 4 subnets that we'll use throughout the presentation. So we will see those a few more times throughout the presentation. To configure now, you don't configure the subnet numbers directly on the router. Instead, you configure a specific IP address. The subnet number or subnet ID represents a group of addresses. The router is configured with a specific IP address inside that subnet. So at the bottom of this particular PowerPoint slide, you see the addresses I chose for each of the three interfaces on router R1 from the left side of that figure. And since it's router R1, I picked the last octet value of 1 just to make it easier to remember. So you see the three IP addresses there, and you see the interface numbers, G00 for gigabit 00, serial 000, and gigabit 0 slash 1. 
Then if you take your attention up to the top, that's the relatively straightforward IP, ver excuse me, IP version 4 configuration. Three separate IP address commands, each under a different interface, followed by the IP address, not the subnet ID, but the IP address and the dotted decimal subnet mask. Now let me take a breath there. So far, that's kind of what we thought of as the prerequisites coming in. If that's new to you, that's okay. You can look at it when it's recorded and work through the details there. We'll review it in the CLI over to the right in just a moment as well. Now we're going to take that and compare it to IP version 6. All right. So to do that, the locations for the IPv6 subnets, if our goal is to implement IPv6 on all the same interfaces and all the same routers, the same exact locations and the same exact number of subnets. We'll need five subnets. The numbers themselves, though, are much different because IP version 6, of course, uses 128 bit numbers instead of 32 bit numbers. And instead of like IP version 4 showing them in decimal, IPv6 uses hexadecimal. So those five longish numbers you see there are hexadecimal numbers with some colons to separate different sections, different sets of up to four hex digits. With a prefix, it is a slash 64, a prefix length at the end of slash 64. So let's take a look at the far left-hand side where it says 2001 colon dogbaker8 colon able colon 1111 colon colon. Yeah, it takes a while to read these, these things. That's the subnet ID, sometimes simply called the prefix. And the slash 64 part, that's the prefix length. That's the IP version 6 equivalent of the subnet mask. So that identifies the subnet on the left. So there's the equivalent of our IPv4 subnet planning diagram. But just like with IPv4, we're not going to configure the subnet number on the interfaces. We're going to configure specific IP addresses. So flipping over to the next slide and looking at the bottom, same diagram we had for IP version 4, but now we've got IP version 6 addresses listed. And in particular, look at the tail end of this long IPv6 value. This one now ends in colon 1. So what we did was take the subnet ID and pick the very first valid number we could use for an address that ends in hexadecimal 1. And that's the address I happen to choose to use on interface G00. Similarly, I picked the colon 1 address for serial 000 and the colon 1 address for G01. Now, I've been going at a pretty regular clip here. Now, let's slow down for a second and start to get to the comparisons. Because practically speaking, to do well in the exam, you need to be ready to do things like answer sim questions and simlet questions. And those make you analyze existing config change that config, or answer a multi-choice question about why the config is wrong. All right? So look toward the top and think about these commands that configure the IPv6 addresses compared to the IP address commands. Instead of IP, the command starts with IPv6. We still have the keyword address. And then instead of an IP version 4 address and mask, we've got the IP version 6 address and mask. So what's the same? Well, it's still got a keyword at the front, still got the address. It's still done in interface configuration mode. The difference, as you would, of course, guess, is that you code the IP version 6 address value. A quirk of syntax, there is no space between the address here and the slash 64. It really is the one, then the slash, and the 64 with no spaces when you type in the command. So that's a big similarity between how you configure the two.